This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, and welcome back to another edition, a good old fun Sunday edition of Dolany TV Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel. And let me tell you, you know what that Nine Things article, guys? There are just crazy articles and crazy news coming out of everywhere all the time lately that we could sit here and discuss all we want, a million Oilers things. And here I've been enjoying my summer instead. How crazy am I? That said, number nine on the list of nine things by Kurt Levins in the Edmonton Journal today starts off simply saying, will the Edmonton Oilers keep Jujar Kara, Gaetan Oss? That's the question. Which one, Haas or Jujar Kara? I suspect one or the other, but not both. Levin says, I strongly expect a legitimate third line center is on Ken Holland's shopping list, so there will only be room for one of Kara or Haas. And that makes sense because let's just quickly go do a cap friendly kind of check, shall we? That seems to be a really good idea to do. So, Jujar Kara making $1.2 million next year. Yes, Jujar Kara, a guy you can get some value for in a trade. And then you've got Gaetan Oz, who is signed through next year at 9.15. So, right, two guys right there. You do need to figure out what goes on with some salary moving forward. And, I mean, yeah, sure, it's only 1 mil or 1.2 mil, but if you... uh. If you look at it that way, there is some room to maneuver. And that's the beautiful part is, you know what? Yeah, $1 million, that frees up enough room to maneuver in the case of the Oilers. If you can move one of those guys in a trade for a pick and end up getting back a guy that goes into the system, that's not the worst thing, right? A pick, whether it be a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever you get. And I'm not saying that uh, Jujar Kara is going to go for a seventh, and I'm not saying Gaetan Oss is going to go for a third, but slot those guys in there anywhere you want, and you end up getting a pick out of one of them. However, right, so that is the question. Now you've got a clear kind of divide. You've got Gaetan Oss, the right-hand shot centerman. You've got Jujar Kara, the big guy. That plays left wing, center, bruises you if he is on his game, can really make a difference physically. Knows how to throw the weight around and fight. That's that's what you get out of Jujar Kara. And for 1.2 million, if you get the offense we know he can provide, he's a very good bargain ad. Gaetan Oss on the other side, well, he's just as good of a bargain ad being that right hand shot center. He's sneaky, he's got some speed. He really learned how to play the big boy game in the NHL quite quickly after going down to Bakersfield for those two games. He had 10 points in 58 games played with the Oilers. The guy can be very effective in the Oilers lineup in a second go around as well. Problem is, how do you see these guys? Do you see Jujar Kara being a centerman? Do you see him being a winger? And do you see Gaetan Oss being a guy that on this Oilers team beats out Cooper Marody at camp for that fourth line center role. If, according to Kurt Levins, Ken Holland gets his third line centerman. That is the question that begs to be asked. And it's a tough one, right? You just you just don't know how it would roll out. And I mean at this point we're not necessarily talking about trading one or the other because we're not talking trades until the end of playoffs. But in any scenario where you see an Oilers player getting traded, any scenario, any scenario, it's for an upgrade to the team, right? Most likely. This is about the only scenario. In the Edmonton Oilers system, when it comes to trading, other than potentially Chris Russell or Matt Benning, on the back end, these two guys, Jujar Karagaita Oz, are two guys you end up trading for a pick. Now, do we need to debate why I think it would be Jujar Kara over Gaetan Oz? Pretty simple. Gaetan Oz is a guy that, yeah, you know what? The NHL saw him this year for 58 games, but I think the Oilers saw more out of Gaetan than anyone else, and I think they're going to be more inclined to keep him and work with him being that right-hand shot centerman and a guy that, you know what, necessarily I don't think any other NHL team is just banging down the door to get, or else they would have went out and signed him last offseason on July 1st. 
Now, Jujar Kara, guys, that is a guy that can add to a lot of teams rather quickly. You look at the cap friendly numbers here, and even so, if there are there are at least 12 teams in the NHL that have 1.2 million in cap space this year, so they could easily go out and find a spot for Jujar Kara for a third, fourth round pick somewhere in there. And Jujar Kara, a guy that you know what. Based on what we've seen out of him, when he is on his game, he is worth that kind of thing. Gaetan Oss, I don't know if you get more than a fifth or a fourth, considering Tyler Ennis went for a fifth at the deadline for Haas. So that that is the end-all, be-all question is, yes, one or the other, but what do you do? Do you go with the guy that's grown up in the farm system, a guy that, well, is a valuable piece to the Oilers lineup, or do you go with a guy who got his feet wet in the NHL this past season and is ready to hopefully break out for a second season on the fourth line with the Oilers being that right-hand shot centerman? That is quite useful at times. So let's just quickly go to old hockeyreference.com. I know it's been a long time since I took you guys there. So uh, let me see if I can find this. Get on Haas, that's what we're looking for. And we're looking for Jujar Kara as well. And then let's see if I can find this here as hockey reference. Thank you. And bingo. So let me get to Gaetan Oss's record here. And quickly, 58 games, 5 goals, 5 assists, 10 points, minus 1. And a total of a 9.3 shooting percentage on 54 shots. So he is averaging less than a shot a game. Averaging though 9.42 average time on ice per game. Was a 42.2% in the face-off draw. Yeah, I knew I needed to check that stat. That is probably where you guys want to move on from Gaetan Oss being a centerman on this Oilers team and allow somebody else to sure up that fourth line. Maybe, like I said, a Cooper Marodi and just get some value, get a pick back in the system and work that way around it. I don't know, up to you. But giveaways, takeaways were the exact same. He was also good for a hit per game. Now, Jujar Kara in his fifth season as an Edmonton Oilers, fifth different season, not fifth full season, he had six goals, four assists, 10 points, a minus 19 on the year, 69 shots in 64 games played, 8.7 shooting percentage, 12 point, or 12.32 average time on ice, and a total in the face-off dot after taking 66 draws this year, 51.5%. So... Over Gaetan Oss is 400 draws in which he was 42.2. I'm liking those odds with Juju Arcara. But again, right, value versus asset kind of deal. Let's go quickly to the playoffs for Kara, where he went 11 for 11 in the faceoff dot. 50% overall, had 7 hits in 4 games, 7 shots, no goals, 11-17 average time on ice. And was part of that big boy line with Neil and Chieson where you see that Gaetan Oss draw, drew into the lineup for one game and had a 41.7% face-off percentage. That's really the only thing valuable here other than the four shots that he didn't score on in 5 for 7, or 5 and 7 in the draw. So, right, like, I, I'm not talking game-changers here for any team in terms of what we'd be trading away in either Jujar Kara or Gaetan Oss. I think it's just... You can get more for JJ. We've talked about trading JJ. I think it's maybe that time to trade him and free up a lineup spot for a guy to come in and be like a Cooper Marodi or a Tyler Benson or whoever you want to get in there. Obviously, yes, the lineup spot's probably going to get freed up with Patrick Russell departing, hopefully. And there is so much to be considered. But at the end of the day, right, is this is a pick em. Pick who you, who you don't want. And I, one or the other is not a bad option. And that's as sad as it is because Gaetan Oss is a good guy who could come in and really showcase something in his second year. And Jujar Kara is a product of our farm system that's really come up and been a success story in terms of developing a prospect into a rugged role player at the NHL level. That's, you know what, that is just as key as developing superstar players. You have to have guys who can play up and down the lineup and Jujar Kara other than playing with Connor McDavid, has done that to this point of his career and has found success at different varying se sets of lines throughout the Oilers lineup. So it just is what it is. But take more value, 
take a roster spot, whatever you want to do, it's about the same in salary difference. Of, yeah, three hundred thousand dollars. But honestly, you know what? That three hundred thousand dollars. You want to talk about it? Toss out the Eric Griva buyout, and right there, there's your free three hundred thousand dollars. So if you want to move Haas, you freed up one point two million dollars in one move. Kind of technically, sort of, right? So I don't know what the future holds for either of them. It begs to differ, but I guess really it comes down to the question: Do you find that legitimate third line center for the Edmonton Oilers? That's Ken Holland's job. We'll find out if he can achieve it. Guys, I'm Tyson. This is Stalin TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will catch you in the next one.